You probably can't tell, but I've actually moved my office to the upstairs of my house. There's a couple disadvantages to that. For one thing, I don't have an ethernet cable up here to directly connect to my network. Uh, I've also decided because I have slightly less space to downsize to a mini PC, which only has two storage devices inside. Doesn't have USB 4 and only has two NVMe. So I'm going from basically four NVMe's and six SATA devices to two. So yeah, 10 down to two. Why does that matter? Well, this is a NAS and this is not just a normal NAS, normal NAS. Not just a normal NAS, this is a LinkStation N1 NVMe NAS. So fast, fast, fast storage. So I've done a little bit of network stuff. I'm kind of a noob, I would say, and by kind of, I mean very much. So I'm gonna approach this kind of as a new person because I think, you know, there's channels out there who cover, you know, NAS products from NAS people, NAS people, I guess I'd call them, people who are really into like network storage and that. And they can be pretty high level videos, right? Um, and that then there's people like me who are kind of like middle, I mean, generally tech savvy, yes, but not into this kind of stuff. You know, what is this like to set it up as a completely new person? Let's come in here, have a look at the device here. So it's a nice little sleek thing, meant to be obviously very small, nice little package because I mean, it's taking M.2 NVMe, so it doesn't need a lot. You get your power, that's gonna be hooked up to the network. Eventually, once this is set up, I'll move it downstairs to where my router is. So it's hooked directly in because I don't have Ethernet up here. Two USBs, good, HDMI, so you can check status messages. Audio out, so you can use that. I guess you could go over HDMI as well. Uh, and then here, uh, let's open that up. <clears throat> so we get set one and that twos, set two and that two. You know, just kind of a little, uh, Accent there as I pull that down. A little bit more accessibility here. You can slide those out there. Uh, for SATA, oh geez, there's for your SATA. I don't know if you can see that. You're not going to see that on camera. Can you see that? No, there's just no way of getting light in there. Anyways, there's SATA in there. SATA uh, SSD storage. So, so like that there. Let's see, it's kind of like that. Right, it's gonna go in like that, so you can put it on here, I suppose. You could screw it in, I guess, if you care. All right, screw that in there. Oops, let's sit down. Yeah, there you go. Screw that in there, get your SATA storage, right? And people may think, well, why would you get SATA storage? Well, SATA storage is still very capable, let's be honest. Like, um, you know, you're not, it's not gonna be as fast as an NV, NVMe, M.2 NVMe, but it's still considered very fast, so this work. Oh, that's such a cool, that's that's really cool. Look at that. That's kind of genius, actually. There's no need for like anything else. This is actually like spring-loaded, right? So you just put that in there like that. Genius. How is this the first, is this patented? Is that a patented thing? And if not, why is not everybody doing it? And if it is patented, pay for the patent because that's, that's such a simple quality of life thing. It's quite nice. What's this do? That's the little dongle there, I guess, for Wi-Fi. A lot of these brands, I guess, they use like Bluetooth or Wi-Fi off of little dongles. I guess they don't have to, you know, put on like an Intel board or something like that. Probably just a cost. I think I'm going to go get this set up now, and I'm going to move it down to an office downstairs. Uh, and to my, I'm going to move it downstairs to my little storage area, um, and then I'm actually going to be using it up here, obviously. But I'll go move it down there and come back. Okay, very easy. Power on. Power in. Ethernet, you can use these if needed, you know, you can hook up other stuff. If you need to see what's going on, the actual NAS, you can use that HDMI. Just hit the power button there and we're good. So it's going to be doing stuff. It's probably going to take a minute to initialize and I'll go upstairs. Uh, and then you have to, I guess, set up a initial set in. So the default is, I guess it says the default is route. And then you do your uh, default password. Uh, yeah, and so then they basically give you this little card here to set up Unraid or Unraid, however you say that. All right, so you come here to get a little scratch code. I guess I'll set that up and come back. It's literally, it just tells you, it's like come in here and then go, well, normally this is purchase, but I guess you just do it right here. Okay, so let's see how easy this is to use as a noob. I'm going in here blind, totally blind. So we can see here, we have the device itself with the N5105 processor, four core, more than enough realistically. Uh, what else do we got in here in terms of the thing? We've got our RAM here, 16 gigabytes. We're using none, basically, that's fine. Uh, this is all fine, interface. There's nothing going on, so that's fine. Parity, it didn't do anything yet, so I haven't set anything up. We've got all our drives here, four NVMEs, two SAT. I'm not sure how they figure, figure it out, but that's fine. Uh, there's nothing going on yet. I don't, 
I haven't even formatted these things. Okay, so here's our new drive, the new NVMe. We can plop that in there. So, so we'll take that out. So now we're gonna have uh, MX500, one of the MX500. Apparently the uh, parity does need to have the uh, larger drive. So unfortunately, because these are 4.1, they're slightly over four, technically it's gonna freak out if this one's in here. So I'm gonna take that out just for now. Take that out there. So we're gonna have NVMe 1, NVMe 2, NVMe 3. Uh, NVMe 4 is gonna be for parity. And then we're gonna have cache as the SSD. We'll just, I guess, have a spare MX5 for now. Realistically, if you did this technically, you probably want you know, these to be four terabytes. So these Kyoxi ones are obviously slightly larger, unfortunately. The issue is here that these SATA drives, they actually come up as four terabytes, right? And these uh, NVMe's here from Kyoxi are 4.1, and you always need to have the largest drive there. So theoretically, you'd be better off using a type of drive that actually comes up as four, like this here. Because if I put that in there, it's gonna freak out and say, you know, it's not the, it's not the biggest drive. Okay, so I'm just gonna reset this. Reset this, I just went into tools and hit new config, because I screwed everything up. That's fine. So we'll come in here, parity one. Unfortunately, we're gonna have to use one of these larger NVMe's because they're bigger. They're actually bigger than 4.1. Ideally, these would be four terabytes, four terabytes, four terabytes, four, 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 all the way down. Because if I put an MX500 in here, it's gonna complain. It's gonna say it's not the biggest drive, which is true. Um, ideally, you know, you'd have NVMe's like this here. See this NVMe down here? which is four terabytes, you wouldn't have an NVMe that's bigger than that. So unfortunately, I do have to use one of the NVMe's as parity, it's fine. But ideally, I would have preferred to have just one of the SATA drives. Uh, but when you do this, just make sure you have all the same size, four, 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 and then you won't have this problem. So yeah, don't get weird Kyoxi OEM drives. You can't even buy these. These are drives you get pull from like servers and stuff, so it's fine. So we'll go start. Go proceed, it's gonna nuke all my data. Uh, it should take a while. These are pretty fast drives, but it should take a while, realistically, to set this array up um, and sync everything. But we'll see here. Look at that. See, much faster when I'm not actually dialing with my crappy Wi-Fi, right? Gigabytes per second, right? Fast, 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 super fast. Yeah, look at that. Pew. Just ripping through. So, I mean, yeah, other than my crappy, horrible, horrible Wi-Fi connection right now, this thing is quick. Realistically, you're gonna be able to work off of this, right? It's not just the fact that you can be able to stream very quick, you know, videos, video files, move them on your computer, move them off your computer. What's happening here is you're actually able to edit and work off of this here. Like I can stream video files directly off. Look at me. I can stream video files directly off of this and I, it's going to be quick enough that I'm actually going to, be able to do video editing right on the system file here. Right? So there's a huge advantage here. It's not just for data storage, which is obviously a big advocate for a big point of what this is for data storage, obviously, but it's actually used for data editing and actually using it as a video editor. So if you're a content creator, video editor, graphic designer, anyone who's working with big data, Right, this is the way you're gonna to wanna to go because you're gonna be able to set this up here. It's gonna be very fast, right? Basically limited to your network speeds and the speeds of your drives. These are very fast NVMEs, right? So I mean, like I said, it's fast. You know, I'm actually gonna, uh, I'm not gonna bring the thing up because I'm gonna leave it down where it is so I can use it. But um, yeah, that's basically the review of the LinkStation N1. It's fantastic, right? It's very easy to use. You get access to uh, Unraid or UNRAID, whatever it's called. Uh, very easy to set up. Uh, I'm going to pin a guide down in the video description down below uh, that I followed because like I'm a real noob to this. It was pretty easy, but just a couple couple of minutiae things you got to go through to get it set up. It wasn't hard. It just takes five minutes or whatever. And then you have this awesome, awesome product here where you have tons of storage, fast, fast, fast storage, right? Uh, come in here, you know, very, very fast, fast enough that especially if you're using NVMe, SATA drives, you're gonna be fast enough you're gonna be able to do your video editing, graphic design, GIS, whatever it is that has big data, you're gonna be able to do it directly off of the network, right? Rather than a hard drive based solution where you're moving data on, moving data off, more of an archival type product, right? Have your videos on there, pull them off, edit them on your computer, move them back. That's not the point here. The point here is that it's fast, very fast.